Hello and welcome. This is Impulse and Momentum, part nine, which is about uh, center of mass. So I'm going to calculate the center of mass of a mass distribution. Um, let's recall that for uh, regular objects, uh, by regular I mean uniform mass distributions, such as a rectangle, may even have a thickness, you know, like this. All you have to do is to determine where the geometrical center is. That'll also be the central mass. Um, same thing for a disc, you know, this shape, a disc, the center. Now, what if we take half of the disc and only consider, let's say this part. So let's put this on the X, Y uh, plane. Let this be the X axis. And this is the Y direction. So this is the origin and the thickness, <coughs> let's say it's T, the thickness like a 3D view of this object. Uh, the radius will be A. Okay, so where's the center of mass now? It won't be the center anymore. Uh, I guess you guessed that already. It's going to be somewhere here. There's still a left and right symmetry. So you want it to be on the y-axis, but where exactly? So let's solve this problem of finding the center of mass. Let's just find the y-coordinate. Y center of mass. X center of mass is obviously zero. So maybe to solve this problem, we got to start with something a little simpler. Let's say, what will be the, okay, it's a really bad drawing. Let's see here. Again. What will be the, center of mass of a semi hoop really thin okay let's say the radius is r and the thickness on the xy plane not the thickness t that t doesn't matter actually dr okay a really thin infinitesimally thin strip curved in the shape of a semi hoop and where will be the center of mass how do you find this so let's tackle this problem first and we're going to move on to the semi disc so let's recall the formula why dm. What is dm? It is the mass of this object. dm. Well actually um, that would be the total mass. It's going to be the dm for this the disk but right now let the total mass be just M. And let the M be the mass contained here only, which corresponds to an angle of D theta. And we're measuring theta from the X axis. 
So the arc length that corresponds to that d theta is r d theta. All right. So dm would be the density rho times r d theta times dr. And what is rho? So rho will be capital M, that's total mass. You just divide it by um, pi a squared over two, the area times T, the thickness. So that times R times D theta times DR gives you the DM. Okay, what about Y? Why is this number here? This is Y. Y is R sine theta. Now, R is the radius of this semi-hoop. It is a constant. So, we don't really integrate that to solve uh, this problem first. So, two M divided by by a squared t, that's rho times r d theta dr times y, which is r sine theta, which makes this r squared sine theta. Okay, so the only integral we really worry about is the one over theta. Okay, so two m r squared dr over pi a squared t. Actually, in this dn, we also have that t, the thickness, which will be carried here. And it's gonna cancel the t over here. So I don't need to write t here. Let's get rid of that t. And pi p, pi a squared, Okay, an integral from angle zero to pi. Sine theta d theta. Now this is negative cosine theta from zero to pi, which is negative now Cosine at pi is negative one. Minus cosine zero is one, which makes two. So we get here, two times two, four m r squared dr over pi a squared. Now take this hope and apply it to this disk or semi-disk. All right, so we're gonna integrate this. Four m r squared dr over pi a squared from r equals zero 
to r equals a. Okay, this was the integral that I started with. Uh, that divided by total mass will be the y center of mass. This m cancels that m. There's four here. R squared becomes R cubed over three. So four A cubed divided by A squared, three pi A squared or four A over three pi. That's where your center of mass is. Okay, um, let me do a couple of more. What if we have a combination of point particles and uh, continuous mass distributions? Okay, let's, how about this? Let's say you have a rod, long one, but negligible thickness, and you place a mass here, a ball of radius, r, but r is small to the length, compared to the length, and there's another one. So let's say this is m1, m2, and the mass of the rod is m. The length of the rod is l. And this mass here, a away from one side, and this mass on the other side. Okay, so where is the center of mass? I'm gonna call it x. This is the x direction. Okay, so pick your zero, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Let's say this is your zero. So we have two point particles. These are really small in size, but they're still massive. And there's a mass distribution. Now, if this is uniform, we know that the rod itself will have a center of mass right in the middle at L over two. So, it's like we have three point particles, but not the rod. So these are M1, M2, which are there anyways, but you put all that mass, the mass of the rod, here. At L over two. So this becomes L over two minus A. Okay, so the center of mass. In the numerator, we need each mass multiplied by its coordinate. So M1 times zero plus M times L over two plus M2 times, that's L minus A. Total mass in the denominator. All right, so that's a hybrid way. Okay, 
so using this center of mass idea, um, we could apply it to momentum. So in general, we had xi mi divided by the total mass. Take the time derivative of both sides, one over total mass times each mass multiplied by its velocity by definition. So multiplied by mt and you'll have mt x by dt dt and this will be actually the sum of the momenta of the particle collection and this will be uh, the center of mass momentum uh, you could take one more derivative and you would obtain so a center of mass would be equal to one over mass total m i times a i all right so um, for each mass times its acceleration is the net force on that object. So the summation of all the forces, all net forces on the object will be equal to total mass times the acceleration. Now when you have a collection of particles, let's say you have four, five, you can have as many as you like. Imagine the uh, asteroid belt uh, going around the sun, for instance, and consider the gravitational interaction between these masses and the sun. So each mass will be attracted to another asteroid. You will have these Newtonian action reaction pairs. Okay, come up with all combinations here. This will be attracted to that, this one, and then this and that. Think about all the possibilities. In that summation though, we'll have say F I J plus F J i, if this is the ith particle, and this is the jth particle, and by Newton's third law, this is equal to negative f i j, which will cancel that. So in that summation, the only force that remem that remains is the external force, like the sun. So around the sun, there are these asteroids. And it's as if all of the mass is concentrated on just one, and that is orbiting the sun. The resulting um, things like velocity and period, these will be identical. So you can extend this to galaxies, the motions of stars, 
and all that. Okay, so the idea of uh, center of mass and its momentum and how that momentum changes. So if there's an external force, the momentum or dp by dt. If there are no external forces, total momentum will be constant. Um, a, a shell flying as a momentum, but then it explodes or just um, separates into two. So one piece going like this, another piece going there. But the center of mass of the two, which is following the, as a point, the original path. So sort of momentum uh, conservation applies here. And for planetary motion, uh, we have um, angular momentum conservation, which will be another topic some other day. Okay, so please read this chapter uh, about momentum and this section about the center of mass momentum. And this chapter is finished. Okay, let's stop now.